Thanks for joining me today for Vinyasa Yoga. My name is Erica and I'm with UMBC Recreation. If you're new to this class or new to yoga, this class is beginner friendly um, in the sense that I will not just call out a pose and expect you to know where to go. I will build us into poses. Um, and so we'll start with the slow warm up. We'll build heat in the body. Um, I'll be more detailed in the warm up with our alignment since we're going to revisit those poses again and again. Um, it'll sort of get the hang of it and you won't need as much guidance as we go along. We will pick up the pace and then we end with the cool down. We lay flat on our back, uh, remaining still for about two to three minutes in a final rest period at the end of the class. I do like to say that is the most important part of the class because not only are we absorbing the benefits of what movements we put in our body, what organ systems that we've targeted, we're also giving ourselves a little time for reflection because yoga is not just about what we do in our physical body, it's about what goes on off the mat and what goes on inside of ourselves as well. I want to remind everyone to always listen to your body, take breaks if you need to, skip poses if they just don't feel right for you, um, and always check with your doctor before you start a new exercise regimen. Unfortunately, as much as I would like to play music and a playlist during our class, I'm not able to do so on the pre-recorded classes. So if you prefer to listen to music, take a second, pause the video, put on your favorite playlist, and then join me again. We're gonna start today in a standing position facing the front of your mat. So feet are hips width distance apart. Find lengths on the side of the body, out through the crown of the head, relax the shoulders away from the ears. And start to deepen the breath. Keep your gaze focused on one spot for the next few moments and just focus on your breath. Starting to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Nice cleansing breath. Go ahead and resume your normal pattern of breath and start to roll the shoulders up towards the ears, then down the back. Nice, big, exaggerated circles to help loosen up the shoulders and the chest. Making as big of a circle as you can. And then reversing direction. Shoulders come up and then down the front. Up to shoulder, up to ears, and down and around the front. A few times in this direction as well. and find some stillness. Take your right hands behind your back and grab above your opposite elbow. Gently tug down on that arm and let your head fall to the opposite side. Take a few breaths here, keep the length in the spine. And release, so now left hand comes behind the back, grabbing above the opposite elbow, giving a very gentle tug and letting head fall over to the left. Lower both arms down at your sides and bring both hands behind the back. Again, grabbing onto opposite elbows. And open the front of the chest so shoulder blades reach to touch behind the heart. Chin is tilted slightly up towards the ceiling and core is engaged, so resist the urge to lift your tailbone up as well. Tuck the tailbone under, send it long to the floor, and let the opening come from the upper chest. Nice deep breaths, shoulders melt away from ears. Belly's active. Great counter stretch, especially if you spend a lot of time during your day in front of a computer sitting at a desk. Release both arms down at your sides, lift them up to shoulder height, and give yourself a hug, lowering chin to chest. Now opening on the back side of the body. Lift your arms back to shoulder height. Lift both arms overhead, gaze up to ceiling, and lower to forward fold. Hands come together, we hinge forward at the hips. We drop the belly to the thighs, bend the knees enough until you can make contact, and crown of head reaches to the floor, arms hang heavy towards the floor. No matter how bent or unbent your knees are, belly should be touching the thighs, 
Hips stay reaching actively up towards the ceiling, so legs stay active and low belly draws in. Shake the head yes to no a few times, help the neck relax. Then one vertebrae at a time, starting at the tailbone, we'll start to rise up to standing. Slowly moving the roundness of the spine all the way up the back, letting the chin come up from the chest last and standing all the way up. Bring both arms up overhead. Bend the elbows into goddess arms, so we're lowering them down to shoulder height, palms face forward, opening the front of the chest once again. Straighten the arms so they're equal with shoulder height, and give yourself another hug. If you remember which arm was on top last time, try switching the arms and gently lower chin towards chest. Arms come back to shoulder height, chin lifts from the chest. Bring both arms overhead, gaze up, and then bend the elbows back into goddess arms, lowering elbows in line with shoulders, palms face forward. Extend the arms back overhead, gaze up, and lower back to forward fold. Hands come together, we're hinging at the hips, belly comes down to thighs, head hangs heavy. Rise to half lift, bringing hands to shins, flattening the chest parallel to floor. Gaze is at the floor, shoulders draw away from ears. Then step into a plank position, bend the knees so you can plant the hands and step back into a traditional plank. So wrists are stacked under the shoulders, heels are in line with hips, hips are in line with shoulders, total bodies engaged. Then lower knees to mat. Lift up to the tips of the fingers and round the spine into cat pose, tucking chin to chest. Then lift and arch the spine into cow, tilting the head up towards the ceiling. So start the movement with your tailbone as we round the spine, leading with the tailbone, moving the roundness up the spine, chin lowers to chest last. Then again, let the tailbone lead the way as you find the arch in the spine, chin lifts from the chest last. One more time, finding the roundness in the spine, taking your time, moving through each part of the spine, then lifting and arching nice and slow, tilting head up towards ceiling. Extend your right leg behind you, pointing through the toes, heel in line with hip, and flatten the back, so draw belly in. Give me a tabletop crunch, drawing knee in towards the chest, rounding the spine, drawing the belly and lifting the knee as high as you can, then stepping the foot into lunge, foot in between hands, or manually placing that foot into lunge, whatever's easiest for you. Draw the breath in through the nose and slowly lift both arms overhead. Exhale and pause here. Finding length through the sides of the body, core is active. Shoulders relaxing away from ears. Slowly start to twist to the right into a spinal twist, lowering the arms down at your sides, engaging the core. As you inhale, both arms come back overhead. Exhale, brings fingertips back to the floor. Bring your right hand to the inside of the forefoot and heel toe that foot out to the outer edge of the mat, stacking the knee back over the ankle, opening the hip a little bit here. Maybe you feel enough sensation here. If you don't feel enough sensation or you'd like to create some more, flex the foot so toes lift off the mat. And then keep the foot in line with the shin here. We're gonna open the knee, so we're gonna let the knee fall out towards the long edge of the mat. Spine stays long in whichever position you're in. Gaze is down towards the floor. Nice deep breaths. If you let the knee fall out, bring your foot back flat to the mat and we'll all return to lunge. So hand returns to the outside of the foot, foot is in the center. Still on the tips of our fingers, Extend the forward leg behind you, so right leg extends behind you, pointing through the toes, then return a tabletop knee to mat. Left leg extends, heel in line with hip, flatten the back, drawing belly in. 
Give me a tabletop crunch, knee draws in towards the chest, rounding the spine, drawing the belly in and stepping or placing your foot into lunge, ankle below the knee. Draw the breath in through the nose and slowly lift both arms overhead and exhale at the top. On your next exhale, find the twist towards your left, lowering arms down at your sides. As you inhale, draw both arms back overhead, facing forward, exhaling, fingertips to floor. Left hand comes to the inside this time, heel toe the left foot out to the outer edge of the mat, stacking knee over the ankle. Spine is long. You can stay here. Or if you're taking it a step further, you're flexing the forefoot and letting the knee fall out towards the long edge of the mat. Slowly make your way back to lunge, foot is in between the hands. Extend the forward leg long behind you, pointing through the toes, then returning to tabletop, knee to mat. Lower to puppy pose, dropping elbows to mat, stacked under shoulders, palms face down, and head hangs heavy. And take a few breaths here. This pose here is option one for your rest position throughout the class today. It's just a little easier on the knees. Your other option is to find child's pose. Hips settle all the way back to the heels and rest your forehead on the mat. Try them both out. If you've never tried the poses before, see what feels best in your body. And then you'll hang out there for the next few moments. Deepen the breath. And appreciate these moments of stillness as we finish our warm up. Today, I'll ask you to set an intention for your practice. So think of something that you want to cultivate in your life, something that you want more of. If you're at a complete loss, you can steal my intention for the day, which is confidence. Wanting to instill more confidence in everything that I do. Whatever your intention is, I want you to think on it and I'll ask you to bring your attention back several times throughout the class. And think of it this way, we're gonna use our bodies to bring life to that intention. Use your inhale and rise back to a tabletop position on your hands and your knees. Spread the fingers nice and wide, planting your hands firmly on the mat. Tuck your toes onto the mat. If you're familiar with down dog, go ahead and lift the hips up to ceiling now. Otherwise, we'll take it in parts. Start by lifting the knees off the mat and engaging the core. Feel how much weight is in your hands. We wanna keep the weight in our hands, press firmly into pointer finger and the thumb. Keeping the knees bent, we'll send the hips up towards the ceiling. Move nice and slow so you don't lose the weight in the hands. Belly's reaching back towards the thighs, gaze in between the feet. And down dog, we're lengthening our spines, total body stretch. Feeling some sensation in the Legs too. And take a few deep breaths. Look forward, start to shift the weight forward and step or place your right foot into lunge, lifting up to the tips of the fingers, sending chest forward. Step up to half lift, feet step together, hands to shins, back is flat. Lower to forward fold, bend the knees so belly touches thighs, crown of the head reaches to the floor. Then one vertebrae at a time, we'll round our spines until we make it to a standing position. Slowly lift both arms overhead and gaze up towards the ceiling. Take a few breaths here. On your next exhale, find forward fold, belly dropping down to the thighs. Rise, half lift, flatten your back. Then step into a plank position. 
before lowering the knees to tabletop. Lean forward for Chaturanga, shoulders past the wrist, bend the elbows, bring your chest down the floor, elbows stay close to body, and then the hips come down, tops of feet to mat and hands under shoulders. Lift your chested baby, cobra, shoulder blades reach behind the heart, then press to your rest position, whether that's puppy pose, elbows to mat, or child's pose, hips to heels, yogi's choice. Take a breath or two here. And as you inhale, meet me back in a tabletop position, spreading the fingers wide, tucking toes onto mat and lifting to down dog. Knees lift first, belly comes back to thighs as hips raise towards the ceiling, pressing firmly into pointer finger and the thumb. Outer rotation of the upper arms. Low belly draws in. And I always like to find a little bit of movement in my first few down dogs. So if you wanna switch bending the knees, feeling sensation in the stretched leg or the extended leg, you can find a little bit of movement that way, bending one knee at a time, or maybe shifting hip side to side, whatever's comfortable for you. Help the muscles loosen up. Look forward and step or place your left foot into lunge, lifting up to tips of fingers. Step up to half lift, flat in the back, hands to shins. Lower to fold, belly meets the thighs, and slowly rise to your standing position. One vertebrae at a time, let the chin come up from the chest last. Once you're in a standing position, both arms lift overhead, same thing and we're lowering to four full, second time through. Rise to half lift, flat in the back, and step into your plank position. Lower knees to tabletop, and lower to chaturanga, leaning forward, bending elbows, keeping them close to the body, and bringing your whole body flat to mat. Lift the chest to baby cobra, using the strength of the core, so don't press into your hands to find a lift. And then find your rest position, puppy pose or child's. Try to deepen the breath each time you come to your rest position. And we'll all meet back in tabletop on our hands and our knees. On your next exhale, lift the hips to downward facing dog. Hips go up towards the ceiling and we'll take a few breaths here. You're more than welcome to find any movement that's comfortable for you. I know down dog can be a lot, especially for beginners. So if you're new and down dog just seems like a lot, you're more than welcome to skip a down dog here and there. Just jump back in the practice whenever you're ready. Look forward and step or place your right foot into lunge, ankle right below the knee. Step up to half lift, feet together, hands to shins. Lower to forward fold, belly meets the thighs. And we'll rise up to standing nice and slow. Last time through, deep breath in as you lift the arms overhead. And exhale to fold, belly meets the thighs. Inhale, half lift, flatten your back. Exhale as you find your plank in tabletop position. Take a deep breath in when you're on your knees. And exhale to chaturanga, leaning forward, bending the elbows and coming flat to the floor. Inhale, baby cobra. Lifting the chest, exhale to your rest position. Inhale right back to tabletop and exhale to your downward facing dog. Taking a few breaths here. Remembering that knees can stay bent if you like some ease and the sensation in the legs. And bring your focus back to your intention. When you're feeling a lot of sensations, imagine that we're using our bodies, putting this work in our bodies to make these intentions come true in our life. Look forward and step your right foot into lunge. Step up to half lift as you inhale. Exhale to forward fold. Try to draw the inhale out as you slowly rise to standing. When it's okay if you can't draw the inhale out that long, then exhale once you get to the top. Lift both arms overhead and settle into chair pose, bending the knees, sending the hips back like we're sitting in an imaginary chair, keeping arms lifted. We're strengthening our core, strengthening our legs, 
tucking the tailbone under so don't let it poke up towards the ceiling. And then we'll lower to forward fold, belly meets the thighs. Rise, half lift, flatten your back. Step into your plank position. Lower knees to tabletop. Lift up to the tips of the fingers. Extend your left leg behind you, pointing through the toes, heel in line with hip, flat in the back. Give me a crunch, knee to chest, now rounding the back, lifting the knee as high as you can and getting the foot into a lunge position. Tuck right toes onto the mat and lift that knee into the air, lifting up to pointer and middle finger, sending the chest forward once again. Hands come to the forward thigh and extend both arms overhead into high lunge. Left knee is stacked over the ankle on the ball of the right foot. Take a few deep breaths into the chest. Open a five-pointed star facing the right side of your mat, lowering arms to shoulder height and turning both feet forward. Just the left foot's gonna face the front of the mat now, and we'll bend the knee into warrior two, stacking it right over the ankle, gazing out over left middle finger. Pressing firmly into the pinky edge of your right foot. Strengthening our legs, opening the hips. If you'd like a little more sensation in your hips, just widen your stance a bit. Still pressing firmly into the pinky edge of right foot. Straighten the forward leg. We'll reach towards the front of the mat as hips reach towards the back of the mat and fall into triangle. Right arm comes up to ceiling. We twist and lift the chest up towards the ceiling as well. Gaze is up at the upraised hand. Now you might have the urge to use your left hand to sort of hold you up and support your body, but instead I want you to engage your core. Allow your core to hold you up. Draw belly in towards the spine. As we inhale, we'll rise back to a standing position, arms at shoulder height, and turn the left foot to face forward. Bring hands to your hips. Hinge forward at the hips, bringing fingertips down to the floor. You can bend your knees if you need to. And we'll walk into lunge. So left foot turns towards the front of the mat. Our hands frame the forward foot and right heel lifts off the mat. Back into lunge. Step back into your plank position. Lower the knees to tabletop and find chaturanga leaning forward, bending the elbows, lowering flat. Inhale as you lift the chest to baby cobra, tighten that core and exhale to your rest position. Taking a few moments of breath here. Deepening the breath. If you're choosing to be in child's pose, fill up your breath on the back side of the body. Utilize that space. I know it can feel a little crunched on the front side of the body since thighs are pretty close to chest. Fill the breath on sides of body and back of body as well. As you inhale, meet me back in a tabletop position. And when you're ready, exhale to your downward facing dog. Deep breaths in through the nose, out through mouth. In through nose, out through mouth. Step your left foot into lunge. Inhale as you step up to half lift. Exhale as you lower to forward fold. Try to draw that inhale out as you slowly rise to standing. Then exhale at the top. One last chair pose, lifting arms overhead and bending the knees like you're taking a seat in an imaginary chair. Tuck that tailbone under, don't hold the breath. Think about how much we're strengthening those cores and then lower to forward fold, belly meets the thighs. Let arms and head hang. Rise, half lift. Step back into your plank position and meet me in tabletop, knees to mat lifting up to the tips of the fingers. This time the right leg extends behind you. Give me a crunch into lunge, so knee to chest, sin foot in between the hands. Left knee lifts off the floor. 
Bring hands to the forward thigh and extend arms overhead into high lunge, holding here. Give me a few deep breaths. Open a five-pointed star facing the left side of your mat. Feet turn forward and arms are shoulder height. Right foot turns towards the front of the mat and you bend the knee into warrior two, stack it right over the ankle. If you made any adjustments on the other side, like widening your stance, try doing the same here, see how it feels. This time pressing firmly into the pinky edge of the left foot, right knee is stacked right over the ankle. Straighten the forward leg. Reach towards the front of the mat, send the hips towards the back of the mat, and left arm lifts to the ceiling and to triangle pose. Gaze is up, left ribs lifting towards the ceiling, core is engaged. Breathe into the chest. On your next exhale, lift back up, lifting arms to shoulder height, turn the right foot forward and lower hands to hips. Hinge forward at the hips, bringing fingertips down towards the floor. Right foot turns towards the front of the mat. Walk your hands back into lunge. Left heel lifts off the mat. Step back into your plank position. Lower knees to tabletop. And lower to chaturanga. Inhaling, lifting chest, baby cobra. And exhale to your rest position. Bringing your focus back to your intention. Repeating it to yourself. I welcome more confidence into my life. On your inhale, rise to tabletop. And on your exhale, lift to downward dog. Last down dog of the class. Give me a few deep breaths or skip the pose completely if you're feeling a little tired. And find some movement. Try to close your eyes and just let your body move how it wants. No judgments. Deep in the breath. If the eyes were closed, go ahead and open them. We'll all step our right foot into lunge. Inhale as you step up to half lift. Exhale as you lower to forward fold. And try to draw that inhale out as you slowly rise to standing. Then exhaling at the top. Give me a nice deep breath in through the nose, lifting arms out at your sides, up overhead. And as you exhale out through the mouth, sweep your arms back down at your sides. Bring both hands to heart center and step your right foot behind you on the ball of the foot. Activate your left leg so glute is active, thigh is on. You should feel the muscles around the kneecap lift. Our left leg is going to be our standing leg in our warrior three pose. Try not to lock out the left knee. Instead, put a tiny micro bend so that we're relying on our muscle to hold us up rather than our joint. We're going to slowly start to hinge at the hips, aiming to bring our chest about parallel to the floor, and our right leg is lifting behind us as we go. Foot is flexed. Ideally, we would like to be chest parallel to floor, heel in line with hip, and gaze is down towards the mat. Know that if you're wobbly, that's a-okay. You're working on your balance. Don't hold the breath. If you're like, um, this is completely impossible, there's no way, take a look up here and you can work here instead. So you can lean forward, hinging at the hip and lifting the foot just a few inches and then lowering the foot back to the mat. You can work right here throughout the remainder of the pose if your balance isn't the greatest. Just be thankful that we're working on our balance. If you're in a full extended warrior three, slowly start to rise to standing and we'll all switch legs. Now the right leg is the standing leg. Activate that glute in the thigh, tiny micro bend in the knee, left foot steps behind us. 
spine length out through the crown of your head and activate your core before you fall forward, lifting the leg behind you as you go. If you happen to fall out of the pose at any time, just hop back in for the remainder of the exercise. If you feel like you want to challenge yourself a little bit and you're feeling a little steady, so foot is grounded to the floor, try playing with the arms, maybe sending them behind you, palms face down the floor, bringing them out to your sides. Do some funky movements with your arms and see if it messes up your balance any. Just have fun with it. Then we'll all slowly rise to standing, stepping our foot down to the mat. Feet are hips with distance apart, standing at the top of the mat. Give me a deep breath in through the nose, lifting arms up overhead. As you exhale, forward fold as belly meets the thighs. Take a few seconds here, let the head hang heavy. And I'll offer you some variations if you'd like to switch up your forward fold so you can stay right where you're at. Option one is to bring the hands behind the back and interlacing the fingers. This is helping to open the chest. Fingers are interlaced, palms pressed together. We're straightening the arms up towards the ceiling and shoulder blades behind the heart. Option two is to take your peace fingers, pointer finger and middle finger wrapped around your big toe, bending elbows out to long edges of your mat, helping to lengthen the spine a little more. You can try them both out, take a few breaths. and rise to half lift, flattening the back. Step back into your plank position and we'll hold here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower yourself all the way down to your mat, however you can get there. Arms are along the sides of your body, palms face up towards the sky. And turn your head to one side so you can rest on your cheek. We'll take a short rest here. Wiggle the shoulders away from the ears. If you'd like to deepen the stretch for your neck, turn your head so that you're resting more on your ear than you are your cheek. Now gently turn your head to the opposite side, starting on your cheek first. Moving to the ear if you're deepening the stretch. Go ahead and bring your chin to the mat. Place your hands underneath your shoulders and for one final time, press yourself into your chosen rest position. Slowly make your way to a comfortable or a seated position, excuse me, sitting in the center of your mat with your legs extended forward. Feet are flexed. I'll give everybody a moment. Once you're in your seated position, find length through the spine, lift both arms overhead. Drop your chin to your chest and round the spine into rounded back stretch, lowering hands to the knees, thumbs on the inside and elbows pointing out to long edges of your mat. Relaxing shoulders away from ears and taking some deep breaths. 
If you find that you can't take deep breaths where you're at, ease out of the pose a little bit. Breath is more important than how much you can round the spine. And try to draw the breath to the space you feel the most sensation. Ask those muscles to release the tension and the stress that they're holding. Slowly start to lengthen and straighten the spine right into staff pose, planting hands on either sides of your hips, finding length out through the crown of your head before relaxing back to neutral. Bend both knees, planting your feet on the mat. Hands placed on the back of the thighs for support as you roll down until your back is flat on the mat. Separate your feet to mat with distance apart and let the knees fall together, taking another short rest here as we're winding down the practice. If you'd like a little sensation in the chest, try taking the arms overhead and loosely reaching for opposite elbows. Everyone slightly tuck your chin in towards your chest. Straighten your legs onto the mat. If arms were overhead, lower them down by your sides. Draw right knee in towards the chest for apanasana, interlacing the fingers, holding a few inches below the knee and drawing thigh close to body. Both feet are flexed, extended leg is engaged. If you're feeling any discomfort on your knee, hold onto the back of the thigh instead and draw the thigh close to the body that way. this pose we're encouraging a healthy digestive system. Right now with the right knee drawn into the chest we're massaging the ascending colon. Release your hold returning your leg to the mat then drawing left knee in towards the chest again interlacing the fingers holding below the knee flexing the feet. Right leg is engaged. Now we're stimulating our descending colon. Gently release, returning your leg to the mat. Then draw both knees in towards the chest, feet side by side, holding on below the knees or on the back of the thighs. Low back presses into the floor. And chin slightly tucks in towards the chest. Release your arms to the floor at shoulder height, palms face up towards the ceiling. Let the knees fall to the right into recline spinal twist and gently turn your head towards the left. This is our final pose before our final resting pose. It's a great time to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. Slowly draw the knees back to the center of your chest. Let them fall over to the left and slowly turn your head to the right.
Draw the knees back to the center of your chest. Wrap your arms around your legs, drawing them close to the body. Lift your head to meet your knees. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold the breath at the top. As you exhale out the mouth, release the hold you have on your body so that you can lay flat on your mat. Spread your legs and arms nice and wide. Palms face up towards the ceiling. Take up as much space as you can. Take another deep breath in through the nose and as you exhale out through the mouth, let everything go onto the mat. If eyes are not yet closed, close them now. Bring your attention to your breath following the rise and fall of your chest. And for the final time, I'll ask you to bring your attention to your intention. Repeating it to yourself. And as you breathe in, imagine your body glowing with a bright light as you're attracting everything you need to bring this intention to fruition. If your focus has wandered, bring your attention back to your breath. Slowly start to deepen your breath. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Walk a movement back to your body. And gently roll over to the right side of your body and take a moment of stillness on your side. Keeping your eyes closed or your gaze low to the floor, slowly press yourself up into any comfortable seated position and place your hands out at your sides, fingertips to floor. As always to finish class, we'll take three cleansing breaths together as one. That's breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Today, as we inhale, we'll lift the arms up overhead. As we exhale, we'll lower the arms nice and wide down back at our sides, fingertips returning to floor. We'll start on an exhale, releasing all the breath we have out of our bodies. Then we'll draw the breath in through the nose, slowly lifting arms both overhead, filling up the chest with breath. Exhaling out through the mouth, slowly lowering the fingertips down towards the floor. Try to deepen the breath. As we breathe in through the nose, we're slowly lifting arms back up overhead, filling up the body with breath as much as we can. Exhaling out through the mouth, Returning fingertips to floor. Last time, deep breath in, bringing arms up. And slow exhale out as hands return to floor. Take both hands 
together at Heart Center. And take a second to thank yourself for this practice. Thank you for giving the time to take this class. There's a light within me that honors and respects the light that exists within each and every one of you. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's class. If you did, just know that there are more versions of this class aired every Monday at 8 a.m. If you're looking for something a little more challenging, I do teach a core yoga class. It's structured much the same. However, I tie in a lot of core targeting yoga work as well as other traditional core exercises. Um, I think it's a lot of fun, so try it out if you haven't already. Check out the other classes we have to offer this week, and I hope to see you guys next time. Oh,